Warning, the following contains explicit language and subject matter that may not be suitable for younger listeners, church folk, and people who enjoy kale smoothies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to A Pot Amongst Men. I'm your host, Steve B., and this is Coffee Break Conversations for the 21st Century. I have a full house today. I'm joined, first off, new new face on here. You might see him a little bit. This is my little cousin, Ray J., Raymond. He's really Ray J. Not, I didn't even make that up. <laughs> but uh, he's going to be my, pro- my producer in training, so he's going to sit in with us. You might hear his voice. Say hello. Give him some love. What's going on? And on the other side of the table, <laughs> I have the two hosts of the Introverted Intuition podcast. I have Jeff. Yep, yep. Hello, hello. And I got CR. What's going on, everybody? Two Jersey boys. It's nice to represent the state in the house. Yeah, Absolutely. It's morning rays. Yeah, so thank you for coming, guys. Thank, thank you for having us. us man. So uh, before we start, do you want to kind of give a bit of an introduction as to who you guys are? You want to just, you know. We know you know you're the podcast host, but tell us a little bit about you. Like what, just a little like uh, like bu- a couple bullet points for the listeners. Uh, my name is Jeff Jeff Kelly. Um, I am a podcaster, clothing designer, author, soon to be best selling author. Hey, do me a favor, pull that a little bit away from yeah. your mouth. Oh yeah, got you, got you. There you go. And um, yeah, just a full every I, every definition of what a creative is, entrepreneur is. That is me. That is me. And um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Honestly. So, um, if you're listening to my voice, it's your boy CR right now. Um, I'm fresh and born out of Elizabeth, New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? Um, I love doing music. I was born to do music. I'm a musician. I own a record label called Jump Out the Frame. That is my original passion. My father's also a musician. But I branched out into podcasting once I relinked with a friend who goes by the name of Jeff. <laughs> yeah, he brought me and introduced me into the world of podcasting, and I, f- I fell in love with it since. And he brought me in as a guest and brought me on as a co-host later. Um, but those are the main things I do. I also model. I've worked with some online magazines. Shout out to We Are Jersey Magazine. Um, and, yeah, content creator is basically the yes. the name that I go by because yeah. I have a lot of different talents, not to sound braggadocious. It's just how I was born. And... I try to use them all, but I get distracted, so I stick to what I like the most, which is music and podcasting. Yeah? Yeah. Well, I've been listening to your show. Like, I found you guys. I mean, I haven't been there the whole time, I'm sorry to admit, but since I found you, I've been trying to get a a feel as to who you guys are. Like, how did you guys come up with that, with the podcast? Because I know a lot of people have different reasons for getting into it, and it's such, like, a crowded field now. We're all all podcasters. But it's like, what's your what's your niche? How'd you jump into this uh, this game? So for me, I started podcasting. I got into around 2013, 2014, and they quickly grew to be an escape for me from the darkness of depression and anxiety conjure. OK, every episode of every podcast I listened to freed me and kept me honestly sane. And it got to a certain point where I was doing nothing with the inspiration and the motivation and the peace I was gaining from these podcast episodes that I was listening to. And uh, eventually became overwhelming, and I wanted to transfer that that energy I was getting, and give it to other people. And give it, give it a little more space. A little more space. I'm we're sorry. Getting, I thought I was pops. a professional. <laughs> uh, it's a new mic. You got, you guys are the first ones using those two. I just got them. Awesome. So um, yeah, I just it got to a point where the the inspiration, motivation, and peace I was getting from podcasts wasn't transferring to anything productive, and I decided to utilize that I, what I was getting and create my own platform to provide the same feeling for other people. And that was three years ago. Nice. And Three years later, almost four next year, it's uh, been a life-changing experience. Do you find that, like, because I have the same thing. I always listen to podcasts all day. With my job, I just podcast back-to-back eight hours a day. And uh, it's I never felt like I wasn't getting what I needed from podcasts. I just always felt like, like, shit, I could do this. Yeah. Like, Mm -hmm. not, not, you know, not to knock on any of the people that I listen to. Mm Because some, you know, I listen to some, what I think are some great podcasts. But... I, ever, I think at some point most people have the feeling, like, yo, I could do this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like I want to, I want to talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah. I always hear people like, like I, if I listen to like Joey Diaz, you know who he is? Yes. Like if I heard it, yeah, he's from Jersey. So yeah. when I would hear him talk about stuff like, oh, I took the, the whatever number bus in Jersey City, you, you know, could totally relate. Yeah, and there's some guy doing the dope roll in the back, and they farted in his face while they were getting off, and they were little kids. So you know what I mean? But it was stuff like that that was relatable that yeah. I thought, yeah, you know what, I like that. And then I started thinking like, nobody really does the, 
the everyday guy, the average guy talk. Like everybody's trying to be like a, you know, an actor or a comedian or something. Everybody's trying to be bigger than than what they are right now. Right? It's just being yourself, and like I think the small truths that we all live on a daily basis is what makes life so funny, right? We yeah, all love yeah. comedy. The thing that makes comedy so good is that it's relatable and it's like things that we all think but don't say out loud yeah you know what i mean absolutely and that's yeah. what makes it so funny so i just i i bask in that i agree 100%. but i i, I kind of disagree in the fact that like uh, everyone can podcast everyone who can speak can podcast mm -hmm. but this is an art form that's not meant for everybody i agree 100%. you have to know your lane you have to know your strength because we don't need this market already even more oversaturated than, than it already is that's for sure that's true because there's some shows no no dropping names but there's some shows where i'm just like yo what the hell like what are yeah. you guys talking about like yeah people, i was wondering like what's the point like what, what is the point because right, yeah. i think some people really just have no plan mm -hmm. they hop in a room together and press record like not dissing anybody who can do that and make it effective but if you're doing that and you're all over the place and you're hard to follow it's just like nobody's gonna listen to that for sure yeah. it's tough too because it is they have made it pretty easy for for the average person to start nowadays, you could buy like the, the little like the the two Literally, mic yeah, uh, yeah. interface, <laughs> yeah. you know, Best Buy or something, and yeah. a couple like Yeti mics, and then yeah, I have a podcast. And then next thing you know, it's like a year later, they all has a podcast going. <laughs> ah, you know, I haven't I haven't released anything in a while, you know. But yeah, I'm I'm working, I'm working. You gotta have a purpose for everything you do in life. Yeah, you have to have set goals, short I'm, term and long term. I'm, I'm in the kitchen right now. I'm I'm cooking. Don't worry, don't worry. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> So, uh, how'd you guys come up, uh, decide on that name, Introverted Intuition? Is Jeff that came, Jeff came up with? That I came name. up with it honestly. Like, I had seen those two words just somewhere on the internet at some point, and then I, I once I actually Googled what it what it was. It was just uh, it was the name of an album I never heard. Uh, it's by uh, it's by uh, an to artist. This day. Till this day, I've never heard it. <laughs> it's by this artist by the name of Lance Sidewalker. He's on TDEs with Kendrick Lamar and J Rock and all them. But he's the only artist on TDE I never heard of. But I always liked the name Introverted Intuition. That's the name of his first album. Um, and I just I really stole it. Truthfully, it sounded great <laughs> because like I, I am an introvert, and obviously, if you know what the definition of intuition is, like if you're if you're a thinker, an eccentric thinker, a creative thinker, it just all makes sense. Okay. What about you, CR? Like you said, you're a musician. How do you make that that jump from music to podcasting? Um. So, like, even with music, I feel like um, it's a personality thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I love people. I don't care what walk of life you've come from. I feel like we can all relate to being human. Mm -hmm. And so that's what brought me um here is just, like, he was somebody that I worked with. We both, you know, bonded over the hate over this job that we had <laughs> uh, working in a warehouse. Uh, we hated that job. Uh, we're not going to name drop. But, um, yeah, hell no. yeah, we were working in a warehouse. And we were both talking about our aspirations, and we just we both had dreams. Like that was before I started my record label. It was before he started his podcast. We were literally just talking, and we were so amped up. And then we didn't talk for years after that job. Mm -hmm. Like I started my label. He he started his podcast. He had a number of different co-hosts, mm -hmm. um, and then he brought me back on as a guest. And I just really love talking to people. You know what I'm saying? It just felt like another outlet. Mm -hmm. So it felt very natural for me. And I fell in love with that. I didn't even really listen to podcasts until you brought me on. Then I started listening. No, I, I, when I say I wasn't in the podcast world, it was just really emerging mm -hmm. around the time he brought me on. It was just being the hot thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, so once he brought me on, I was just like, yo, this is a whole world of audio deliciousness <laughs> that I have been missing out on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he has a great personality too. So it's like we connected through that hate of, hate of our job but when we had those conversations <laughs> of like creativity and art like we just instantly had like chemistry so i was like i always thought in the back of my head of having him on in some form either a guest or even co-host obviously what it came to but yeah we were just i, I think the bridge to from our our connection friendship wise to podcasting was just so seamless mm -hmm. and it well, just made sense well you guys seem like you compliment one another like you're not the same person you know a lot of, there's a lot of podcasts where it's like two of the same guys like doing the same thing but you guys are i don't want to say like a like a martin and lewis kind of thing but <laughs> but different personality types so it works you know yeah. you kind of cover the spectrum yeah what right. about you ray i i never asked you like how i know for us we're a little older than you but like podcasting I'm talking out into the fucking abyss here. <laughs> like, for I, I feel like it's a slightly older older person's game. Is there like young young cats doing podcasts that you know of? <laughs> uh, young cats doing podcasts, not so much. But like, 
What What are the I kids guess. listening to these days? That's a good question. Yeah, I never right thought up. about that. And, I mean, like podcast wise, I feel like nobody really would pay attention to that community, especially because it's filled with like more, I guess, aspiring later generations, maybe like you know, nineteen nineties and stuff, and people mm-hmm. born in that age. And you're just like, you know, you listen to this. 2004, you're just like, well, I'm 16. These guys are pretty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I Those wonder, like, gapped. for this show, it's kind of meant to be like I describe it as like a, a multivitamin in podcast form, mm-hmm. where it's supposed to be for the average guy. You know, you come here, you get your laughs, you get your mm-hmm. serious stuff. You know, or you get it kind of it covers all the spectrum, but it's for guys trying to be better guys. Mm-hmm. And one of the things I wanted to do was also kind of target like the younger dudes, maybe don't have you know, someone to talk to about that kind of shit. They're just kind of floating through and trying to figure it out on their own. Yeah. And I, I, it's tough because I feel like the like guys like, like your age, right? They don't really give a shit what, like I'm, I'm, I'm an old man. I'm on, I'm an old head now, you know, like I got grays. I'm, I'm, I, I enjoy a nice pair of socks. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. Like I'm too old, old and I feel like they're not going to listen. Cause you, I mean, you guys remember being in your teens, you know, the old guys trying to, trying to tell you something, trying to give you a little knowledge, a little wisdom. And you're like, ah, all right, all right. You know, I'm just going to go do my thing. Like, there's a girl over there. I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that mentality, but I was actually never like that. Me no? either. I, 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 I yeah, respect the wisdom and the information that the OGs For, have. And that's what helped me get along right. so quickly because of the obstacles that I faced in my life. If it wasn't for the older men, like my uncles and even some of my friends' fathers, or you know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for them and just me having at least the common sense to listen. Because everybody has, not everybody, some people don't have access to that, but if you do do a majority of people who do don't even listen yeah. i listen you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. even if it was some something that was completely not right at least i took a chance to hear them out you know what i'm saying but we got a lot of kids that just think older people know nothing and it's yeah. just like bro that's gonna like totally hinder you if you listen you could be like a little baby genius <laughs> you know that right like, well here's the rub too because i mean I, don't, I was born in 84 so i'm 35 now and i'm finding that a lot of people like my parents generation uh-huh they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Mm. You know? Yeah. I feel, especially, I guess I'm Italian. You know, there's a lot of Italians that are of, of a certain age mm. that are, that think a certain way. Traditional. Yeah. They I wa- get it. They watch a certain news channel. You yeah. know what I mean? You know, they like a certain. They have a routine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And any other information just does not get in. Mm-hmm. You know? They have a fixed mindset. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And you kind of look at those people and you're like, Jesus Christ, like, I hope I don't end up like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, to a certain extent I understand like the young guys maybe they see that like why the fuck am I gonna listen to you Yeah, you know what I mean like you guys believe anything you see on Facebook (laughs) that's really (laughs) true you don't question anything and now I'm supposed to use that as like a model for how to be right so I get it and I you know it's a double edged sword it is it's part of the learning curve of growing up like especially in this day and age because we live in the information era right so it's like you're competing with information on the internet you know so it's hard to tell them what's right or wrong because they're going to go f- find something on the internet and be like well I don't know this is what they said yeah well that's right. the fucked up part that's too the is that part. there's so much information it's like it's like trying to drink out of a fire hose you know what I mean <laughs> right right it's just like a fire hose of misinformation just, just pointed at everybody's forehead yeah the problem is you don't really know how to like separate it from each other because exactly. well, you don't thing. have any wisdom or whatever exactly. and you just really like you go and you try to get some and you really don't find it and it's moments like different moments where people give you different sorts of advice and you get it from like like you said different friends of your family or your dad or this and that and you just manage to like try to put that all together in common sense yeah here's the thing you got to watch out for that i I tell a lot of young guys don't use your friends as like role models and don't get your don't get your information from your friends like your peers yeah because they also don't know what's going on you have a better shot using them as examples of what not to do Mm-hmm. That's the better thing. Like, learn from the mistakes of yeah. your friends. Every time like, you see them fuck up, be like, okay, noted. Don't do yes, that. Yes, I need to know why you did that. Like, yeah. like analyze that <laughs> shit. You know what, what I'm saying? Point? What was the point? Like, I need to know. And learn from the mistakes of adults. Like, oh, yeah, of course, of course. Sure. I got the earliest lessons of, like, what I didn't want to be like was when I had the realization that my pops wasn't around. Mm. So when I when I had, was old enough to understand what that reality was for me, I was like, oh, I don't want to be like that. I, I, want, I don't want to be a deadbeat. I don't want to be an absent father. So... Yeah, pay attention to everyone in life, you know, like... 
Every, you can learn something from everybody. The bums, the, the successful people, the homeless people. Everybody has a story. That's something you can't underestimate a person's story. Everybody has a story. Definitely. And that's what makes me respect every person. I don't care what condition you're in. I'm going to treat you like a human being because you got a story. Right. Everybody has some 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 form of knowledge they can give you, whether, yeah. like you said, by showing you what not to do or actually telling you, you know, a, a, giving you a piece of good advice. Right. So before we move on, I should have done this a little earlier, but uh, how did you guys come up? Like, what was it? You said you're from... You were from Elizabeth? You born in mm-hmm. Elizabeth? Yeah, I was born in Elizabeth and grew up in Roselle. Okay. Union County. I've been all over Union County. So, all right. Yeah. And what kind of, like, you have, like, a typical childhood? Anything crazy happened to you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Can I go in? <laughs> Do it. Hit us. Man, yes. my life has been nothing but a fucking movie. I'm an only child, so no brothers or sisters. Both my parents suffer from chronic depression. My mom had postpartum depression. It turned into a major depressive episode and eventually became chronic depression. She's been on meds my entire life. I used to see my mom in the bathroom crying her eyes out, wouldn't understand why. I used to think I was bad luck, you know, because I didn't understand. And my dad was always at work, barely saw him. Um, He was also a musician. Uh, He was, um, I'm Haitian, so he did a a genre called compa, which is Haitian jazz. Okay. And so... He he played an instrument or he was a He played a guitar and he was a singer. Okay. Yeah. Um, Real crafty dude, worked. Um, And growing up, there was a lot of infidelity in that relationship. And I didn't realize until I became an adult what was going on. All these, you know, long, absent days my dad be gone for a couple of days and you remember all that stuff you saw as a kid and, and now you're old enough yeah, to understand right I'm old enough to you know sometimes they say you can't connect the dots unless you're looking back so i'm like all right shit right um so all that really affected me um being the only child watching that stuff made me have a very close relationship with mental health both my parents are you know my dad was a gambler he had a lot of addictions you know what i'm saying mm. um he's definitely better now as a man as a person but during that time, he was going through so much. I mean, he's even attempted suicide a number of times before I hit fifth grade. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, like, being an only child, being young and watching that shit, it's just like, you know, you kind of grow sensitive, but then you also grow cold because there's, like, nothing else can make me feel as bad as this. Yeah. Nothing can shock you either. Nothing can shock That's why people be like, sometimes they're like, yo, you're, like, never scared. Or, like, it's not that I'm not scared. It's just, like, I've already experienced fear like on the highest level, you mm-hmm. know, being in fifth grade and your dad's getting the ambulance and they're pumping his stomach and you're like, what the fuck's going on? God damn. You know? So how much would you say that that's kind of informed who or affected? How much would you say it's impacted who you are as a man today? Like how you came up? Like it, you, it, is that a big, is that like a big part of your, part. your identity now? It's a big part of my identity. It's a big part. That's why I remember those things so vividly. Because of those things that I lived through, I don't take life for granted. I know what I'm susceptible to um, genetically, you know, you inherit the sins of your father, you know, I like smoking, my dad has been smoking, but I like smoking weed though, Mm -hmm. you know, this guy smokes cigarettes, I don't fuck with cigarettes, (laughs) and I wrote papers, you know, shout out to Ross. Um, (laughs) Sponsorship on the way. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, but I'm definitely have the same libido as my dad, you know. (laughs) Definitely the same taste in women. Um, well, how old are you now? 28. Okay. You're in prime years. Yeah. Go live it up, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm still single. No kids. Just getting money and just taking care of me right now. No, you got to yeah. you gotta make sure you're straight before you start worrying about I know. doing all that. And I had to steps. learn that because my uncles and my dad, they didn't, they didn't do it that way. Mm-hmm. Well, that yeah. was the thing, too. Like, the older generations, they started having kids at, like, 19, 20. Yeah. Like, right. that was the norm. That was the norm. And then they didn't, they never found themselves as, as people. As a person. Exactly. Because as soon you as you have a kid, you're giving to that yeah. person, that child. Like, your your life's over for a little while. Like, yeah. you're living so for some, somebody else if you're yeah. doing it right. Yeah. But... Yeah, that that was a big thing. Like my parents, the uh, they had me when they were twenty two. Mm. Dude, I couldn't. I can't even, imagine. I couldn't I even imagine, imagine having a kid at twenty two. Right. I'm thirty five. I'm gonna be thirty six by the time my 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 next son is born. Mm. I can't imagine having a kid now, let alone at twenty two. Yeah. Were you were you 22? like two? I guess ready when you had your first kid. So okay, so my son that you met in there, that's yeah. my stepson. So gotcha. technically, I, I got to skip a few stages, uh-huh. and then the, the universe was like, no, 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 let's go back to start. Mm. Let's let's do the full experience. 
So, so this yeah. is your first, first. This is my first baby. Congratulations! Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, congrats. Yeah. Beautiful. So Jeff, what about you? What was you? How did you come up? I also grew up an only child. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I grew up without a father, so I was raised mostly by my my grandmother, technically, because my mom, growing up in the '90s, she to pay pay her way through school, she had to also work a lot, mm-hmm. so she wasn't always present. And uh, that developed a lot of depression and a lot of guilt because I felt like because my father had left, I felt like responsible for their separation. You mm-hmm. know, growing up in the 90s, it's already hard enough to take care of a child. So especially a child you didn't plan for. Yeah. And I, I didn't know the trajectory of their relationship. I didn't know what they wanted for themselves individually and collectively. And I feel like me being born and me being in my mom's womb was the reason for their split. So I absorbed a lot of that guilt and a lot of that depression for the majority of my life. Um, and I... I walked with me basically up all the way until maybe a few years ago where I really started to accept and understand that it wasn't my fault mm-hmm. and that I'm not my, who my father was and I'm not anything like him because I have nothing to compare him to because I don't know him. Do you have you never met him? No, I've only seen a picture. Uh, I know his name though, so I'm sure I could probably find him. Yeah. Is um, that something you ever thought about doing? I still think about it a lot to this day. I've been thinking about it more uh, recently actually. But uh, I don't know if I'm ready to commit to that that idea yet, just for me, because I know I'm in a good space. Mm-hmm. And depending on how that interaction may go, it may turn out to be negative, and I don't need any type of negative negativity in my life. But outside of my depression and my dark days, I grew up relatively um, healthy, I guess, in a sense. Like the love and the support and the inspiration, the wisdom that my grandmother and my mom imparted into me was really valuable, and it really shaped me into the man I am today. I, I'm, I'm a very ambitious, fearless, confident, creative person because of them Mm -hmm. and i'm just my 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 upbringing was really the dark side of it was self-induced the Mm -hmm. external side of my my upbringing was very great that's that's often how it works too like you don't have those those external forces that are essentially you know bringing you down and filling you with negative thoughts it all comes from within us Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of kids that come up in like the best circumstances that come with a nice family you know they don't have to want for anything and they, they struggle with depression their whole life. Mm-hmm. So true. I, do you, I wonder how much of that it could be genetic too? Because I know, like yeah. for me, like I grew up, I grew up right down the street in Bridgewater. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, I my parents they got they got married when they were twenty two, mm-hmm. right before they had me. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, wasn't playing. <laughs> and uh, you know, they split only three years later. So then, for a while, it was just me and my little sister, and my mom. You know, sharing one one bed down South Jersey. And my mom got remarried, and then, you know, we had a family again, and I had my stepdad. That's him on the wall. Shout out to Ralphie B. Yeah, that's my oh, yeah. man. I, I, I got a lot of love for stepdads, and that's, I became a stepdad, so I, I got to have a lot of love. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I had I had a nice life growing up, but then there was always that that back-and-forth struggle with, you know, with having divorced pa- parents, going back and forth, kind of kids get caught in the middle, that kind of thing. And I, 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 I had a lot of issues with that, and I still do to this day. But... Uh, it's the same way. I can't blame really outside forces. Whatever struggles I had, that happened internally. Right. You know, and that's one of the things I like about having a podcast is we could talk. We could pick, you know, what topics we want to talk about on any given day, mm-hmm. and have people on where we can almost kind of work on ourselves at the same time we're having a constructive conversation with a guest. Yes. So do you guys find that you do that at all? Like you, you pick topics based on stuff that that means something to you personally. Yeah, I feel yeah. like a lot of the times, right, when we have guests, we um we have a preset idea of what we want to talk about and we always tie it back to mental to the umbrella of mental health. So that's the you say that's the overarching theme of the show, mental health? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. We always tie it back to that because um everybody, you know, deals with mental health in a different way. We both have dealt with it, you know. Um dealing with our upbringing Mm -hmm. so i feel like it's always important and that's why we bring it up yeah and it's like what podcasting did for me was give me the confidence to talk about it and face it Mm -hmm. so and and it also shed the light of the feeling of thinking that no one else could relate i I would always be fearful of sharing my experience with depression because i felt like i wouldn't be a bother and two no one else could relate Mm -hmm. but through podcasting i've interacted with people who were guests or just fans of the show who reached out and said, yeah, I have been through that as well. I've experienced a similar feeling. I and, learned um, what terminal uniqueness was. Term- from him. Terminal uniqueness is, is when you are caught up in the idea, you think you're so so unique and you think that no one else can relate to you, it is actually damaging to have that mindset. You feel lonely and isolated. Right. right? Yeah, that makes sense. 
Yeah, I found the same thing. Like, that was what uh, initially drew me to certain podcasts is that feeling of, like, I'm the only one going through this. And because there's so many shows out there, you could basically find a podcast about anything. Mm -hmm. So just hearing other people talk about the stuff that I was going through thinking I was the only one, that meant so much to me. And that was kind of, that was the vibe I wanted to cultivate here. I wanted to do that for someone else. So I try to talk about a lot of different things, but anything for guys today. You know, guys today, I feel like we have limited resources when it comes to mental health, when it comes to just self-esteem stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up when we came up, especially like being kids in the 90s, we're raised by people who have these, uh, you know, older ideas of what it means to be a man. Mm -hmm. You know, they come from a different world, a different time. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the stuff that worked that was necessary for guys to do, yeah, back in the day, it's it's outdated. And now, not only does it not serve us, but it leads to guys getting in trouble and basically wreaking havoc on the lives of people around them. You know, like that whole man up, don't tell people when you're having a problem boys don't cry that's and like the most toxic stuff. shit man and that's why there's so much domestic violence and that's you know what i'm saying because people are mismanaging their emotions like mm-hmm. the biggest reason why you know i think i think a lot of people go on this rampage is always some kind of emotional imbalance at first you know because mm-hmm. that's the trigger to it all right that's what kind of triggers our behavior there's even serial killers you know mm-hmm. if you hear like their upbringing you're like no wonder this guy's a fucking serial killer <laughs> his mom like left yeah. him in the closet yeah. for like 30 days yeah. and Some like people fed just, him crackers yeah he didn't have a chance <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. you know what i mean it's like yeah once you, I, I mean i feel like it's important to understand the psychology of people because what then you can understand why they do what they do once for you sure. understand the way they're thinking and you kind of have more of a I don't want to say empathy, depending on the person. Compassion. Compassion. And that's, but no, but there's nothing wrong with that. There's even if, even if you're that. talking about like someone who did terrible things like yeah, a serial killer, there's still mm-hmm. empathy yeah, there. Yeah, being able to understand how yeah. that happened to a person, yeah. how like this. Because you weren't just born that way. No. Just like, I'm gonna kill a million. Well, like, I mean, I guess maybe that is open to debate, like whether or not mm, it's nature versus nurture. That's true. You know I what know. I mean? Because there's a lot of people that go through horrible, awful stuff in their life and don't turn out to be serial killers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it might be a bit of both. I feel like we all have got a choice on perception, though. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. one thing, right? You can't control the way people perceive things. Yeah, be- because they maybe that person didn't kill someone, they may be treating their girlfriends or their friends and the people in their life tro- toxically. They you can know? be mm-hmm. emotional, uh, s- uh, emotionally sadistic. detached. Yeah, you know yeah. Right? emotionally sadistic and. They could be doing a lot of other damaging things to people psychologically. That's how I'm I actually. It's funny. I just wrote about. I'm sorry. You want to move to your next question? No, no, no. Okay. Go I, ahead. I, I'm writing a book. I, my book's done, but I wrote about this. And um, I was that type of person. I feel like I kind of took. Mm. The serial killer? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my toxicity. <laughs> this my, isn't my house. I don't really live here. <laughs> <laughs> my toxicity with women and how I treated them and how like I may have manipulated them in certain times to get mm-hmm. maybe what I wanted not in like a creepy rapey way or anything like that yeah. but just you know uh, was a branch off of my lack of awareness and my um, lack of understanding of myself and lack of acknowledgement of my past and who I am so I had to really analyze myself and go deep down and figure out what was really wrong with me and why I was like this why these women multiple women who didn't know each other were repeating the same thing about me mm-hmm. so I had to really look within to find out why this was happening in order to grow Grow well, up. I feel like a lot of people don't take the time to, to reflect and be self-aware like that. Because how many times do you, do you see these guys, you know, they, they, you know, this is what the girlfriend number 78. And it's like, eh, these, these women are all crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. They never. I, I don't think it, you know, there's a common denominator yeah. there. And I don't think it's them. They're not building any insight. Yeah. And it's like not a lot of people actually take the time to do that. So that's, I mean, that's big. Like not yeah. everybody is capable of doing that either. Self-awareness should not be underestimated. I give people so much props when you're toxic and you admit that you're toxic. That's so much better than somebody who's toxic and then thinks they're not. They yeah, think yeah. they're great for everybody. I just thought I was super charming, but it's like, no, like I was kind of using that to my advantage. And Well, like I've heard you talk about this on your show before. Oh, like, shit. <laughs> could you uh, kind of elaborate a little bit if you're comfortable talking about that? Like, I think there's a thin line. I think being charming and being manipulative is synonymous. I feel like we put that negative connotation on manipulation because it is, it's mm-hmm. rightly so. There is a negative connotation to that word. But I feel where it kind of gets blurry is when the charm comes in. I feel 
sometimes people get wrapped up in someone's persona and their confidence, their bravado, and then they'll be willing to do anything for them. Mm -hmm. But it's like then they'll cast the blame when things go maybe not how they wanted or maybe not how they expected. But it's like I was just being me and you fell for me and we ended up this way. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I can see how my charm can be labeled as manipulation at times, but... It's not intentional because I'm just being me. And I was just going to say, I think the, the difference between manipulation and charm is all contingent on intention. Right. Right. That's true. But yeah. I mean, would you, I would think if they're considering it manipulation, that would in, kind of imply that you're not the same person you were in the beginning. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. are you, I mean, could there's some not, type of deceit with manipulation? Exactly. Like, right. I've never purposely done anything to hurt anyone. It's mm-hmm. just, Maybe my behavior may end, end up leading us that way where you feel hurt, maybe because comfort levels mm-hmm. or, or whatever, but my intention is never to hurt. It's just to be me, and how you receive me is how is what it is. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. The one thing I've learned since being married is that we as guys, I don't know. I think this goes back to being a kid mm. because it's like if we know something they're going to say is going to make our, our lady upset, well, do whatever we can to avoid it. Like, not even necessarily straight up lie, right. but just like dance around the shit. subject. And because we don't want them to be mad no. at us. We, no. I mean, if you really actually give a shit about the person, yeah. you, you don't want to disappoint them. You don't want to no. let them down. You don't want them to think less of you. Mm-hmm. So, a lot of times we try to avoid this stuff and it always comes around and bites us in the ass. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we and then have, as a being worse than if you would have exactly. just Exactly. Yeah. We're sitting there. Why didn't I just say it and just, you know, take my talking to in the beginning? <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And do, you ever, do you guys find that? Like we we just kind of avoid that stuff. I think, I think that's a very common thing amongst males, mm-hmm. because we're more solution based and we don't really want to like, we don't want to argue. You know, we what don't want to start a problem. Yeah, yeah. We, we like things easy. Yeah, you know, we yeah. we want to. You know, what I'm saying, you know, let's watch a football game, eat some wings. <laughs> <laughs> let's just chill the fuck out. Like, it can be as simple as something like this. Like, yeah. like your wife comes in, baby. Why do you put the trash can right next to the bed? Well, because I don't want to have to throw it all the way across the room. Like, well, yeah. well, who do you well, think I am, El Duque? Here, like, <laughs> I put it right here. I don't miss. Now yeah. the room is clean. It's like, right. yeah, but now you have the trash can right here. But it's only paper. You definitely had that conversation in real life not that one particularly oh. but stuff like that i'm oh. like listen this is the easy effective way i'm trying to streamline this shit right the way you like, said I'm, that i could put the passion in that yeah. one <laughs> well no I, I mean when it comes to household stuff at least i, I don't want to make extra steps for myself right, right like for instance in there like you came out at looking for a towel yeah. like, people why don't we just leave a towel in the bathroom <laughs> So people don't feel awkward having to walk out with wet hands, you know, like they just pissed themselves. Like that's not cool. That, that's how you want your guests to feel. Right, but right. we don't have. We need. You can't have a nice towel. And, uh, you know what? Okay, whatever. I just live here. Yeah, yeah. How do I know? Yeah. Sorry, towel to, in the bathroom. sorry to put my wife on blast. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna like, get myself in trouble now. Yeah, yeah. Huh? So, be like, well, babe, how'd the episode go? <laughs> <laughs> if you learn anything from this. Just be honest in the beginning. It is going to yeah. save yourself a lot of trouble. Oh, no, man. man. A lot of like, trouble, a lot of heartache. Starting, starting. Uh, it's especially with like stuff at like school. Mm. And, you know, being in Miami, everybody's just like a big. It's just a bunch of big egos walking around. Like, well, no, Miami, I, this is something I've learned. I did an episode a while ago with a dude from Miami. Shout out to Nick. Um, we talked about Miami. Miami, it's almost like. Think about the, in the wild, like like a great white shark is like a super predator, like an apex predator, mm-hmm. okay? And it evolved to be that way. But in Miami, you have an entire community of nothing but apex predators. Wow. Everybody's got the gym all the time. Everybody's ripped with the six-pack, all the girls with the fake tits and the fake ass and the plastic surgery. Everybody's hyper-competitive. Wow. Every, exactly. Everybody's on that level. So imagine a whole society of people like that. There's nothing but egos, nothing but, you know, posing for Instagram. It's crazy. It's wild. When I was in Miami, I just saw beer bellies and fucking spray tans and shit. <laughs> Miami's a big city. Yeah, very big. Miami's like, a that big must city. be so that. toxic. I've never been to Miami yet. Well, also, too, with Miami, like, my wife is Cuban. Like, it's a very, my, South Florida is essentially just North Cuba. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you, am I am I lying? No, I, yeah. I gotta go out. You know, gotta <laughs> go. But with, yeah. with a lot of Hispanic cultures too, there's a very that that machista, that that macho man, like uh-huh. that that stereotypical idea of what masculinity is like. Uh-huh. Imagine that everywhere. People just like, I mean, like for example, 
you know, around middle school, you start getting, like, you know, your phone, you start understanding stuff. You're like, oh, I want to talk to the high school kids. These people seem cool. And then you start just, like, mixing into the groups, and you're like, oh, no, who are these people? Like, what is this? <laughs> what did Why I do are you acting like this? You know, and then, and then, you know, you get into, like, that whole other thing, like, social media, for example, mm-hmm. and it's just worse. Like, people are just, like, making these big this is who I am and then you meet them in real life and it's like you know like you said there's a bunch of beer bellies and sandals <laughs> did you feel like an outcast because you were around so, much, so many different people that you weren't like um I mean I guess definitely with the whole moving thing you you move from new school to new school and you see a lot of like new things mm-hmm. and you're just like well you know what? what is this like it, this you go to this school it's in the same you know county or whatever and people are acting different people are acting like um like for example I my normal friend group would be like a bunch you know a bunch of nerds. I play games all competitive day. Competitive gamer. This kid is legit. That's what the money is. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere. But um, fingers crossed. Like, come on, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, get those tournaments. I'll be a manager. <laughs> you go. You go. Like you start like learning about different, like how people think, for example, and how people think in that age. And, and you start running into just like just a bunch of big egos, and this guy acts like this, so I want to w- act like him, and following his steps, and you know, you watch that with like good common sense, and like places, and people you've heard, and you're just like, oh, this is bad, like, this is a bad thing, like, <laughs> why are they doing this? Like for what? Like what's what's the point? You're gonna see, bro. Being up here, it's a different world. Do you feel like it was superficial, like even more superficial because it was Miami? I. Partially. I mean, definitely because of the Cuban personality everywhere. Mm. And it's just like a bunch of Cubans challenging each other left and right. <laughs> and so, like, you know, you run into you run into either, you know, the chill, normal nerd people, whatever. They talk to each other within each other. And then, you know, you, like, outcast yourself into other groups. And you'll see, like, people who definitely think they're popular and they go by that. <laughs> and then you see, like, the Cuban kids and they're just, like, beefing with each other all the time. And everybody's... Puff chest, twenty four seven. You can't really walk around without you. Middle school to high school is a big different thing in Florida because in middle school there's people trying you all the time and like mm-hmm. left and right fights and you wake up and you're eating a bowl of cereal and you just you turn to your left and somebody's dying because somebody's getting punched <laughs> into the ground. Jesus. And then another morning you just be like. Somebody's trying you, and somebody wants to fight you, and you're just like, come on, like, I just want to go to class. I'm tired. I don't even want to <laughs> even wake up for this today. Like, you're, just, you're, you're wasting my time. Right can, we, can we fight on Smash Bros? And stuff? <laughs> <laughs> for real? You, you going to give me some money for this? Come on. So, uh, back, back to where we were. Let me ask you guys this. Do you feel like in the course of being on the show and hosting the show, talking to the people that you talk to, that you've grown as people, like, do you have you gleaned information, gleaned wisdom off these these interviews you've done and the conversations you've had? Man. T- test that first, Tess. <laughs> Absolutely, yo. Yeah. Like, I've become more. Like, I've been naturally introverted my entire life, but I've been able to tap in and control my extroverted side through podcasting. I'm the most. Talk- I could be. I like to talk when I'm comfortable, mm-hmm. but podcasting has allowed me to adjust that uncomfortable side of communication consistently and I, I now I'm able to com- speak in any room I enter no matter what no matter who's in the room no matter how many hot chicks mm-hmm. no matter how many fucking awkward ego ego driven dudes are in there mm-hmm. uh, podcasting is changing me completely communication wise and just emotionally spiritually it just makes me feel good I, I found my purpose through podcasting. Let's say because you describe yourself as an introvert. That's not what you would think of when you talk about a, a talk show host, essentially, like someone who's an introvert, just basically talking. I think that's a miscommunication, though. Yeah. It's like people think that introverts are just these people who just don't like to talk or just mm-hmm. refuse to. But it's like I've always viewed now I view introverts as people who like to who move with their own comfort, who it's communicate selective. with their own comfort, you know, so it's just like uh you could be introverted and have a podcast and i'm i'm i feel like i'm one of the first people to set that wave mm-hmm. trendsetter i guess in a sense right but mm-hmm. let you answer um definitely like um i'm more of an ambivert i'm extroverted but i have a limit where after i'm done interacting with a whole bunch of people i need to be in a corner by myself <laughs> <laughs> you know gotta go recharge the batteries i have to recharge um definitely an ambivert but um 
this this whole journey being a podcaster has just made me so much more intuitive with myself because along with being in podcasting i started my journey with therapy one-on-one therapy psychotherapy and that combined with podcasting has made me such more of a healthier person mentally Mm -hmm. i really have evolved spiritually mentally and now i'm starting to physically because you know i stopped eating meat i'm in the gym every day like i've just been on this journey of self improvement and podcasting just helped facilitate that it's made me really connect with different people i was already a conversationalist but podcasting just makes me love people more i mean love love talking i love listening Mm -hmm. like i listen to every word and sound being uttered out of another person's mouth like i'm so meticulous to words because of po- i was already in love with words but podcasting just brought it more in in just more out you know what i'm saying i'm sorry guys the, the wine is hitting now no 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 <laughs> it's like more more out I, yeah I, I, I found the same thing too like you never realize how much you can enjoy like a good conversation with people, you know, even if even if it's like this, like people you're meeting for the first time, yes. like just having a good one, like a conversation, just letting the walls like fall down and just being just honest, talk. like be who you are. Yes. Yes. It's something very cathartic about yes, it, you know. It is, and especially when you, you, I mean, I would describe myself kind of. I guess I'd be like an ambivert because I, I'd like to not talk to people if mm-hmm, I can, mm-hmm. but I'm good. I'm fine if I have to. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And with this, I find it like. Oh yeah, like there's a reason that that we talk to people because there's so much to be gained from it. Yes. You know, it, it can it can fill yes. you up, and of course sometimes yeah, you need to go into a room by yourself and lock the door and just not talk to anybody mm-hmm. for a little bit. But that's all that's all part of it. That's fine. That's good. Like as long as you can can sit there and have that conversation yes. and just I don't say like vibe with people, but you know what yes. I mean. This there's definitely be, if we were doing this on Zoom right now, it wouldn't be the same. Like we don't. There's no energy, energy transmission. Right, right. You know what I mean? That's yeah. it. Like, and you, I mean, I'm sure that anybody listening or watching, you could tell. Like, there's a big difference in the Huge vibe of the show absolutely. when I have people here and when we're just talking to the computer. It's way more comfortable. Everything, absolutely. Like everything about it. Even even like with the delay on Zoom, you just like you know, say a joke. Three minutes later, everybody's just like, hi. Like, <laughs> well, that's that's been happening a lot lately. And I, you guys are lucky that like, you actually go to a legit studio. You don't have to worry about the editing and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, thank. I'm glad I have Ray here now because he's working the computer for me. Mm-hmm. There's nothing more distracting than having to look to make sure it didn't stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so I, I, I just had a couple weeks ago, I had a total meltdown of all my equipment. Like everything failed on me within a 24 hour period. What? Like I lost all this stuff, the footage I had on the camera, <laughs> the recordings just wouldn't work. Like I, the, I, I couldn't get it. And it was all on Zoom too. So the guy's sitting there waiting for me. I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. I'll be right with you. He's like, no, that's all right. Seriously, don't worry about it. And he was super <laughs> nice. And I'm just like having a complete meltdown. I, I used to do that. Like I used to have record off my laptop before I went to the studio. It was super frustrating, super annoying. Um, and unfortunately, I think that's where the life is maybe heading back to soon with lockdowns and stuff like that. Yeah. So virtual podcasting may be a thing again, unfortunately. But we'll uh, I mean, see. at least we have that capability, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's huge. I, I, you can, it, Depending on how you work it, you could turn it to a positive. Because like, I've been able to get some guests on here that I would never, never be able to get in studio. Mm-hmm. You know, just like reaching out to people, especially during a lockdown. Mm-hmm. Like you want to talk to say like a comedian? Well, guess what? They're not working that much right now. Right. So yeah. as long as you're like cool about it, yeah. a lot of guys have been very generous and like, yeah, let's I'll, I'll come talk to you for an hour, no big deal. Yeah. So I was like, that's fucking awesome. Shout out to Corey Ryan Forrester, Drew Morgan, and Dion Curry because they all came on and they didn't have they don't know me from Adam. They could. Cool. Who the fuck you must have guy? a fire pitch email. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't even <laughs> remember what I say. But they were all really cool about it, man. <laughs> And I think I just the timing was right because that was before people figured out like a way to like like do comedy, you know, during the pandemic. It was before they started doing like the drive in shows and right, right. all these venues had stuff outdoors. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these guys were just sitting there with like nothing to do. And they were some of them were like, Yeah, shit, I'd love to. I have nothing else going on. I guess it sounds fantastic. Yeah. So I was really happy with that. Yeah, I wanted to keep this one kind of like relaxed, just yeah. talking about like being a content creator and the stuff that we choose to talk about. Because I feel like that, you know, it's easy to get somebody on like a like a good flow. You know, you kind of talk about something you're passionate about. Like when you guys do the podcast, how much of it, 
Because like, you said you've been doing it for three years now, right? Yeah, going on four next year. Like, how much of it is is like a grind versus a labor of love? You know, like because it is a lot of work. So the grind is actually hitting me now, going into ne- the new year now, just because we need to level up. We have mm-hmm. to level up our visuals, our audio, our content, and with that requires money. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to like put money aside when you have bills especially during the pandemic like i have a job of course we have merch that sells relatively well but not as well as we like yet Mm -hmm. so the money part is really hard because we have to step up our our, we have to produce our podcast even better to to get to where we want to go where we where we will be and that's like the hardest part of the grind is like making sure we have the funds to do that the people available and just the motivation to do that but getting the guest that's kind of hard too. It's very hard. Yeah, because like certain guests, like I'm, re- I really would love to have on, but it's like either they don't respond or they just, they don't they're not interested or whatever. So that part of the grind I've, I've accepted, but like in terms of like increasing our product the production value of our show and having the funds to do it, that's been the most frustrating, difficult part. We're actually probably gonna talk about that shit after we leave here because yeah. we got to talk about a lot of stuff. But that's been the hardest part about the grind. The, the podcast, doing the podcast itself, is so easy at this point. It's second mm-hmm. nature. I could do this in my sleep. Yeah, the, the the labor of love comes from creating the content itself, right? Mm-hmm. Right, but the the logistics behind the production, that's the grind for me. You know what he just said, like, you know, coming up with a budget that works, um, trying to figure out how to make it profitable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if we're gonna be, you know, trying to invest this much money in production, it only makes sense that we're making a profit off of it. Absolutely. You know. Um, so we're trying to figure out the, 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 the recipe, you know, we got the, we've got, you know, we've got the flavor, you know, people want to eat, but we're trying to figure out how to sell the plates. And we have merch available, teespring.com backslash introverted intuition. If you want your own introverted intuition merch, I'm going to raise my hand right here. So I know where to find this part on the video when I go back. Cause I'm going to put, a, I'm gonna put a link under the video right, right there. I'll so send, I don't think find. that's actually the actual link. I'm going to send it to you, but oh, okay. teespring.com type in introverted intuition. Yeah. Forget about this. We'll do it at the end of the show. So, <laughs> you know, with the official link. Yeah. All right, so uh, what do you guys do? You guys have an approach, like a like a goal to as of. All right, let me try that again. Let me try that again. How do you guys plan on standing out in podcasting? Because it's such a crowded field. You know, there's so many people. Anybody out there can do it. Whether it's just for ten shows or a thousand shows, like what's your your approach as far as standing out? Like, how do you guys set yourselves apart? from the average Joe. Hmm. I want to start by saying consistency. Yes. Consistency, I don't give a damn if you like shining shoes for a living. Right? If you shine shoes longer than every other shine shooter, shoe shiner, you're going to be known as like one of the top shoe shiners in hey, the city. Hey, spit shine Tommy. Yeah, look, t- look at your fucking shine box. Right, Tommy's back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There he is, right there. Let's yeah. somebody we know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, like, that's why I, I, I think consistency makes us stand out the most because even through the pandemic, when other shows weren't putting content out, we had guests. Talk about it. We had some of the biggest guests of ours, like, of, of, the, of the year. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We had, we had you know, shout out to um to Mandy from um Horrible, Horrible Decisions. Decisions. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so, like, that was a big look, and it happened during the pandemic. Consistency makes people respect the craft. Yeah, and it makes people have some type of emotional attachment because through consistency, there's resilience, there is struggle, and everybody can relate to struggle, right? And we're very, very vocal about our struggles on the show, mm-hmm. our struggles for paying for production. Mm-hmm. This is real fucking life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We have to keep it real because that's what people want, and I think that consistency is like one of the biggest things that will make us stand out. And relatability, and yeah. as well that paired right with there. our transparency. Yeah, we have no fear about just expressing our transparency and being who we are at our cores, and totally telling you, honest, and telling you when things aren't great. Mm-hmm. I've cr- on one episode, our second most played episode on YouTube, and probably audio wise too. I cried. I had a whole mental breakdown on the show, live on the show, and that was like our most one of our most uh, viewed episodes yet because of that honesty that I wasn't afraid to express. So, and relatability is people just understand. People just understand not only the mental health, but just like 
what it is, especially the entrepreneurs, the grind, the struggle, mm-hmm. the ups and downs. So everybody's going through their own grinds. That's mm-hmm. obviously that's relatable. Yeah, mm-hmm. outside of entrepreneurship, just in life in general, and we yeah. all we have we express that with no fear. So people relate and they understand and they really fuck with us because we are who we are, no mm-hmm. matter and no matter the setting. Yeah, the authenticity it shines through, you know, and and the lack of it shines through just as strong too. Yes. So right. that's what people can tell. You know, yes. you could be some famous actor. You, oh, I'm going to start a podcast. I already have ten thousand listeners per episode because people know who I am. Mm-hmm. But people are going to realize real quick whether or not you're being your authentic self, or if you're just you know. Acting. And yeah, you know, yeah. the cream's going to rise to the top. Yes. People, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, go I ahead. Got really excited, but like. Um, like he said, like we've had like some of our biggest guests, and it's like we're not the biggest podcast, mm-hmm. but we see the influence we're making. We got yes. certain podcasts back in the studio because we were there yes. in the height of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. We've inspired people. They they've been, told us there's been shows who gotten ideas from us, inspired ideas from us that are bigger shows than us. Like and that, stolen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he said oh, stolen. No, no but, I'm so serious. But you know what? I look at it as a compliment because we I know we're brilliant. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean that in a in a braggadocious way. I mean we're brilliant in the essence of being ourselves. We're mastering the art of being ourselves. That's what this is. This is the journey of mastering the art of being ourselves. And that's just as real as it gets. People say all the time how they fuck with the fact that I just am myself in every room. Podcasting has a big part of that. Mm. I've learned to be comfortable in my own skin. I'm me. Anywhere like Anyway, I don't care who I'm talking to. I love being myself. And the people who can accept that are the ones I gravitate towards. Right. Those are the realest people. And they happen to be extremely Italian lately. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hey. telling you. My paisanos. I'm, the, the last couple of weeks, I've, I've met, I've had a Lyft driver who was Italian. I had a passenger. Who, I, I, I'm just saying, man. I had a lot of people who. No, it's an Italian thing. Like, we like to be good hosts. Yeah. You, and know, you guys you are just. Some, our... You go to an Italian person's house. You don't eat the food. They feel like they failed mm-hmm. as a host. <laughs> Yo, what's the matter? You don't like it? <laughs> when you ask what I wanted like to have for the podcast tonight, whether it be water or sink, like I didn't respond at first because I was like, "Yo, that was so nice." That like, was so nice. Um, right. Listen, I try you. And I, I appreciate you. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Listen, I, I appreciate, appreciate you guys coming all the way out here. You know, of course. not everybody it's feels like far. going out on a Sunday night to some stranger's house. You know what I mean? <laughs> talk about their feelings and shit. Yeah. So listen, I try to take care of people here. You know, Ray, I'm sorry you're not of age yet, and this is on video, so I don't want to incriminate myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, otherwise, you know, maybe. Smart. Uh, really, being, being an alcoholic, I'm yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm an alcoholic. Your mother watches this. She's going to come knife me in my sleep. <laughs> High yeah. school in Miami. Yeah. That's yeah. What <laughs> they're drinking by 16. <laughs> There's so much stuff you will be doing by 16. It's just in Miami, man. It's Listen. terrible out there sometimes. We all, we were all sixteen once, so I try. I don't think it's just Miami. <laughs> uh, I mean, Miami gives you um, all of the above. Would you say if you're really? That's like true. You get one of those. You getting that dull uh, that A one that old booger mm. sugar straight from the source down there. Mm. And, the uh, A one. I've heard some shit. Before. Hanging out with them cocaine cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> shit. But uh, so now let me ask you this: on your show, how do you guys address like? divisive topics because i know especially this year politics has been a big thing Mm -hmm. like do you guys try to steer clear of certain things or do you just let it all go like whatever whatever comes out is what it is no filter no filter i want to get into more divisive topics next year Mm -hmm. i kind of steered clear of like pop culture and current events just because everyone's doing it Mm -hmm. and it's like what makes my my opinion on the topic isn't it can shift yours but in the grand scheme of it it's not going to really matter Mm -hmm. but on the flip side of that, I do enjoy talking about different things. I do enjoy, I have an opinion on everything. Yes. I have an interest in everything. So I will talk about it and research it. Even when I don't research, I'll talk about it too. But um, yeah, we we're, we don't shy away from talking about shit. Okay. We love awkward conversations. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. talk about shit people don't want to say. Like, we don't care. Like, we'll, we'll, <laughs> this guy especially, like, yo, <laughs> he likes to stir the pot. This guy, je- <laughs> we call him the petty podcaster yeah. <laughs> because he likes to stir the pot. Yo, he'll bring up some shit from like, <laughs> like a year ago yeah. that, that, that you said that he never had the opportunity to ask you about and he'll ask you on air like right now like what's up you remember, you remember, you remember six episodes ago you were talking about you accidentally farted and you shit yourself like let's yeah. talk about that <laughs> yeah because yeah, it's like why not talk about it? I don't know but that has been a double edged sword because I've talked about like my past relationships or current relationships and it's those text messages are not pretty mm. you see I, I have the same when it comes to like personal stuff yeah 
I've talked about a lot of stuff. I've talked yeah. about like relationships with my parents, yeah. you know, the growing up, the way I felt, the way the reason I resent certain people. Mm. And it's all fine and well until that person feels a way about mm. what you said. So I'm when it comes to like topics in, in the world and culture and politics and stuff like that, like that's one thing. We could talk about that, fine. But when it comes to talking about people, I try to be real careful about that, especially that. when it comes to loved ones, like family and stuff. Yeah, I never use names, but they somehow always know it's them. Yeah, well, that's tough. Yeah, well, I, I don't get, like you want to get married and have just one woman because I'm I'm stressed. But even that, bro. I mean, listen, I don't want I don't want her to be upset with me. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the last thing I need. Let yeah. me tell you. I, so I got to be very careful. I I, yeah. I I go by this rule. I don't say anything on air that I would have a problem saying to your face. Mm. And if I stick to that rule, I have no fears. Right, because I know that a majority of the stuff that I say, I'm I'm not having no problem saying it to that person. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But if it's something that I wouldn't even say to that person, you best believe that it's gonna stay on the hush hush. You know, right. but that's just my rule of thumb. So if I say anything on the air, it's because I've already told that person, or I have no problem saying it to that person. Well, wait till the next episode because I got mad questions for you. Oh, you may have to say some personal stuff. Okay. <laughs> somebody has been acting a little, a little suspect lately. I just got questions for this guy, man. I don't know. I got questions. What? I'm an open he, He's book. got a little booze in him right now. You might want to ask him now. He'd get away with a lot of shit. It's your show. I don't want to. I don't. I'm trying not to like m- get in the mold of my podcast host and like right. ask questions. That's why. I I, that's control. why I invited you guys. I'm because curious. I love having other podcasters here because that way it makes my my life a little easier. Can I? I can I'm I, not like prying stuff out of people. Like, oh, you know. So how did you feel about this? I felt fine. <laughs> you know, like I got people who can talk. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Cr. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> did you or did you not just come back from Miami recently? I was not in Miami or Florida. I was in Florida. What was your intention for going down there outside of a vacation? I went there to be entertained by a lady friend. A specific lady friend? or Yes, a specific just, lady okay. friend. Who invited me. Oh, she invited you. She invited me okay. to her house. And what happened? Or what didn't happen? Well, Jeff, she took me to a spa. <laughs> She paid for the spa day. It was exquisite. It was lovely. It was a 60-minute massage. Um, then she took me to, to dinner. Then the next day, she also cooked dinner. Mm. Amazing. What'd she make? Um, she made salmon with some spinach, um, some rice. It was really delicious. All right. You know? But um, <clears throat> I was under the impression that this whole trip had a particular goal a intimate goal uh yeah yeah uh and when i brought it up to her you know repeatedly um keep in mind the camera's camera oh scene uh, i'm sorry <laughs> repeatedly um it just seemed that um it frustrated her because she didn't have those expectations she thought i came and took two flights uh to Florida to just hang out and it's a tough one yeah it's a tough one listen my wife that you met in there she lived in Miami when we first met we met in New Orleans and we started doing a long distance relationship for two years Mm. so I flew back and forth every three weeks for two straight years like it's not easy now is this somebody that you 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 know well like somebody you've already got like a little established Thing with. Nah, we met on Instagram. I knew it. Right. <laughs> She's cool though, and we've been talking like you know, I guess almost a year. You know, it was our first time um, meeting in person, but we've definitely expressed interest in each other sexually like we're grown we're almost 30 she's, on. she's one of those that's like all talk yeah mm. like and she made a lot of subliminal posts on her story on Instagram suggesting uh you know, some explicit content was going to be going down. Like, you know, <laughs> oh, he's going to fall in love after he gets this WAP. Like, yeah. you're posting that before I'm coming out there. Like, what do you, of course I'm going to like, you know what I'm saying, have certain expectations. It was this whole thing. It was this whole thing because she felt that she has can't find a man that she could just be, a heterosexual man that she could just be friends with. Right? But here's the thing. I never hit my sexual intentions. I've been flirting with you. Mm-hmm. I've been like, you know, literally gripping your butt, like all types of sisters. I've been here. Mm-hmm. Like, 
You can't and be. She was she was down. She was that? fucking giggling and you know laughing. Do you think you came on too strong at any points? And you may have fumbled the fumble the ball I think yourself. I think possibly because it's too strong for her taste. Mm. She's very conservative. I have to think context. She right? Really? She's 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 from Georgia, but she was living in Florida. You know what I'm saying? So she's used to taking things slow. Mm. Yeah. I'm born and raised in Jersey. All right, let's just be honest. You know, uh, certain situations. Fuck on the first date. I'm just saying. It happens. We're dropping the jaws at the end of the night. You know, I, that's just what I'm used to. Well, see, that's the thing. That's the tough part for us is that we go in. We can go in there with hopes, yeah, but yeah. as far as legit, like hard expectations, that's uh, a whole other story. You know, if a, if a woman changes her mind halfway through the night, then it is what it, it is. is. What it is. You, you have know? to it's accept hard. it. It sucks that you couldn't just go home. Like you were in Florida. Yeah, yeah that's hard. I mean, look, the first night wasn't that bad because she said, in her words, not right now. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe that means tomorrow, you know? (laughs) So, yeah, so I'm thinking, you know, I still had hopes the next day, but then the second time is when it got got deep. So um, the story I created in my head about that situation was not like that at all. (laughs) All right, what was your version? (laughs) You were worried for the CIA and shit? (laughs) No, I just thought, like, you had just because I know I know this guy. Okay. Like I feel like he kind of falls for girls kind of quickly. Like he he gets in. Like I think it just happens naturally because I'm kind of like this too. Like where you just vibe with someone so easily, you just want to be with them. You want to see where it can go. Absolutely. So I thought this guy was talking to her for a week. He was like, "I'm booking a flight. I want to <laughs> be with you." Like type shit. Like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I didn't know they talked for a year. So I just needed some clarity on that. We can get back no, to the regular schedule hilarious. programming, but. I just need some clarity on. I've had, I've had the same thing happen. I've I've driven out of state for a girl that I just met, and then driven home disappointed. You know what I mean? Like it happens to the best of us. It is what it is. It's a lesson learned. You know, I'm not I, judging. Hey, it don't give a damn if you do. All right, she was I'm hot. Ju- I'm judging, and I feel I feel like we're on on a, a much more similar level because like I hey, see that shit happened to me before too. Hell yeah! So only I didn't take a flight; I had to drive. I took two flights. That, that sounds worse. It I was because it was yeah. a long ass yeah. drive. It yeah. wasn't. I mean, I guess putting myself in there it wasn't as bad for me because you know it does, does go down too as a teenager. I guess. I mean, you wouldn't call <laughs> these relationships serious or whatever, right. but you know, you 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 take okay. I got most of this birthday money or whatever, and I'm just like, oh, okay, this is this is good, a little little luxury for myself. Oh. So you take a twenty three dollar Uber to some weird date, go to a national park, it's on top of a hill, you know, you got a great view, first time in New Jersey on a date, and you're just like, damn, like, look at this view, it's crazy, it's gonna be a good first date. <laughs> so it goes down, and goes great, good first day, and then you know you just kind of falling off the next couple of days, and you're just thinking like, man, what? The, what? What? What did I like, do? What the fuck happened? just happened? I had a great date, you know, National Park, this and that. Um, you know, like, and you have a good time. You come out of that just thinking to yourself all day, just like sitting there, maybe playing or something. You're just like, and all that good stuff for what? Like, what did I do? What did I actually accomplish? Out like, of this? was it that time I licked my finger instead of using that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, that's the hard part I've found is that unless, like, if something goes wrong with a girl, like, it's yeah. just, like it just doesn't work. Yeah. Unless she's giving you like a specific reason, like, listen, you did this. Like, I don't like that at all. It's a deal breaker for me. Unless you get that, a lot of times it's just guesswork on our part. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I totally And a lot of girls, they, they have good intentions. They don't want to hurt your feelings. They think, no, he's a nice guy. I just don't feel that way about him. Mm-hmm. But they, in their mind, they feel like you can't just come out and say that to somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Like, no, 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 no. It's, you're, you're a great guy. You're awesome. Like, it's just, I'm not in, in the right place right now. And that leaves you thinking it's like, bullshit. Yeah, it's no like way. No. Yeah, like, what, what did, really, what did I do? What did yeah. I do? Just you don't like me. the way I dress? <laughs> it's the beard, right? It's the yeah. beard. <laughs> like, and then you start second guessing everything you everything. do, and it's like a, it's like a vicious cycle. Yeah, no, I, I found that if you just take away, like, you know, what, what happened? What'd you guys do? Like, if I, if I take away from that, hey, good view. You know, I had a good day. You know, um, pretty good experience, I guess teaches me a little bit of something and i i really just i take that more out of than i take like what did i do wrong yeah and so maybe maybe just more focus on like what what did i do today more than what is like what's my problem like why is she not wanting to be with me anymore more like just hey that was a pretty good day that's how i had to view it because i was like look fuck it i got a 60 minute massage uh i got two no three free meals 
Holla. <laughs> and you know, it is what it is. Um, but nah, yeah. No, I'm still disappointed. Listen, sometimes like, <laughs> sometimes you just gotta look at like, hey, it was fun. I had the massage, I got some good meals, I got to see something different, get out That's of town. That's true. I did do go sightseeing and even, I did enjoy that. Listen, even a even a bad date can still end up being a good memory. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. You can always do. take something positive away from yeah. it. I, I get, um oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it's gotta go real bad to like to yeah. not get anything positive out nah, of it. Yeah, I get it. I like get it. you gotta like shit yourself in the restaurant or something. <laughs> like my <laughs> most recent, because I, I got a relationship out of a relationship in July, so my experience dating recently has either it's been one of two things: just real fast, just having sex, or <laughs> it's just like I can't connect with these girls on a communicative communicative level. Mm-hmm. I just get so bored, and it's just like you don't feel me. In any way outside of yeah. like a physical connection, and like, granted, I got a relationship in July, but I like to have someone. I like to be. I like the idea of love. I love love. I love the idea of a relationship. So I would like to move into one of those eventually. But recently dating, it's just been. I mean, we're transferring into a world where like, communication is going to be really important, especially with like lockdowns and stuff like that. So like, having these bad experience communication while I was with these women, it's just been like stressful like draining it's draining hard. it's a waste of time like and but I, no you don't look at it as as a waste of time because i feel like you learn something about yourself in every one of those even if it's like short yeah. you may even if it's something like you learn oh i don't like this i don't like when a girl that's does what that. I, that's yeah. important I'm that's huge patient. that's huge and i've been learning a lot about what i don't like yeah yes. Now, yes. They, now here's the other, the other side of that that sword is you got to be careful you don't learn too much about what you don't like because then at some point, everything becomes a deal breaker. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like, then you just have this idealized version of a woman that, that doesn't, doesn't exist. exist in reality. And that's kind of my fucking problem right now. Yeah, but no, listen, you're young. You, I always say that shit doesn't happen until you're, like, past your mid-30s. Okay, that makes sense. You know sense. what I mean? Like, if you're, if you're a dude, you've never been married, never been in a real serious relationship, and you're over, say, 35, roundabout, like, then... You're gonna have a hard time when you eventually do find somebody you want to settle mm-hmm. down with, because you're gonna be so set in your ways. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be hard to adjust for another person. Like I got married, I was 32. I got married in 2017. I don't remember how old I was, but mm-hmm. like I lived alone for nine years straight, so I was mm-hmm. set in my ways. Mm-hmm. Like, listen, I come home, there's nobody here. I could do whatever the fuck I want. Mm-hmm. I could sit in my underwear on the couch and just play Dynasty Warriors <laughs> till nine at night. It doesn't matter, right? You know, but when you have other people now everything has to adjust everything. and you don't realize how much has to adjust until that other person is there all the time yeah. so and it's hard if, if you know that like you said that communication that's huge it's huge it's so big 100%. because it's not even just communicating it's actually having the patience and thinking about what it is you're trying to communicate like right. if you're arguing are you trying to are you trying to win the argument mm. or are you trying to actually move forward in the relationship mm. and a lot of people get hung up there so i want to be right it's mm. okay but you know what effect is this having on the on the union you know what if i mean it's not bettering the relationship there's no point in exactly it. i agree treat the relationship in my opinion i, I used to use this analogy with my ex Use the, treat the relationship like a business, right? We're both partners in this business. We want, want this business to be successful, right? Our relationship is the business. So what is the best thing for this relationship, for this business to thrive? Let's do what it needs for this thing to be alive and stay alive. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? What's best for the, the two of us together, not yes, just Yes, not just for you and just for me. Yeah, our combined effort on this thing called a relationship. What can we do to cultivate this and make it great? And it's hard, man. It's hard because sometimes you just want to be fucking right. I know I'm right, yeah. but what am I gaining from this? You know, and I learned that, Getting especially triggered. with women. Exactly, it, being <laughs> right isn't always me. good. Yeah. Just hearing this, yeah, but but that's that's the truth of it, and that's the reality. And it's, the reality. it's not always going to be fifty yeah. fifty. You know? nah, sometimes you're going to have to put in eighty, and sometimes she's going to have to put in you know seventy or eighty yeah. years. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it changes. It, is, yeah. it changes from the situation. Sometimes you need to lean heavily on the other person. But it's all about trust. You know, as long as that trust is maintained, then you can actually, you can feel comfortable enough to communicate what you really feel. Because that's the other thing we talked about earlier. Like, you don't want the, the person you love to be disappointed in you. No. So sometimes we censor ourselves. And, we, you know, they, we always wonder, like, you know, I just, like, I don't know why she doesn't understand what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, it's because we're not really saying it. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're sugarcoating it. We're pussyfooting around. Mm-hmm. Like, if you can just 
be honest with someone and actually trust them enough that you know they're not going to walk out the door as soon as they find the real you then the relationship can really grow from that and I think that's the, that's the problem a lot of us have is that we just we can't really say what we really mean because we're afraid of the consequences of it really and the funny. funny thing is once I became like once I got older and I started like really advancing with the communication that I have with women I realized that they prefer you just keeping it real Mm-hmm. They love that shit. Like, if you just keep it real and you give them the option to feel how they want to feel. Yes. That's what they want. When you tell them things in a way where you're withholding some information and you're making it sound one way when it's really another. Oh, baby, I didn't want to upset you. They yeah. hate that shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With a passion. You're taking away their agency. Yeah. <laughs> give them the option to feel how they want to feel. Say it straight up. And I had to realize that that's what they like, just being straight up. Absolutely. Yeah. But you got to establish that in the beginning, too. Yes. You can't be like, yeah. you know, like you said, just telling them everything they want to hear in the beginning. And, and then, then like six months down the road, it's like, nah, baby, I don't like that. That, sh- that, that dress looks like shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's what? too, too boring. Yeah, they're like, damn, honey, you too never honest. said that before. <laughs> I, I do think CR is going to find love before me, though. You, you think do? So? I, yeah. Why? I, I do. I just I just feel that I feel like. I don't have commitment issues, but I definitely have a wandering eye. I feel like every time I've been in a relationship or like been dating someone, someone else way doper always comes around in my vicinity. And it's like, yo, you're so dope, but I'm with this also dope person. It's like, what Mm -hmm. do I do? I'm always at this crossroads. I have a question. What's your rule of thumb for dope? Like, uh, are we talking physically or full package? I I usually starts physically. Uh, then that's always how it starts. It's fair. Yeah. Then it's men. Then it's just like how that person makes me feel when I communicate with them or I'm with them. Do you think it's something? Uh, you think it, uh, maybe it's not necessarily that you just happen to meet someone else who happens to be dope, but maybe it's it's almost like the novelty of that person. It's like that yeah. that the unknowns. Like they they seem mm. like they're everything you've been looking mm. for, and then you meet them, and then you really get to know them, and you find out. Ah, maybe that was just like that was my perspective from the position I was in at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I want to add a caveat. I've never cheated, but no, um, no, I, I, I've just, uh, I just my my spirit just goes from woman to woman, like no matter what. <laughs> like I, I just, I just love women, and my I just, spirit. I just don't know. Like the longest relationship I have, I had was almost three years. Um, my most recent relationship was my best relationship. It was only eight months. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I just don't know what's meant for me relationship wise going forward. Of course, I want marriage. I want love. I want kids. I want two kids. But my, my wandering eye, like, I don't know if it's just my dick or whatever. Like, <laughs> I just I just love women. I love the idea of women. Uh, and I, I, I feel comfortable communicating with multiple women at a time. I like different personalities. I like different feelings I get from these different women. So I, I just don't know what I need to do in order to get to that, to your state, a mature state. Well, I think everybody's different to a certain extent. And one thing that always helped me was I always try to just turn the tables. I think of like, how would I feel if somebody was doing this to me? Right. You know uh-huh. what I mean? And that kind of kept me on in the line. Not that I really ever had a problem with like temptation or anything like that. That's just not me. Uh-huh. And plus, like, you know, I. I understand, like, I, you know, when you see the handsome man here, but I was never, like, Mr., you know, and I was never the ladies' man, so to mm. speak. But, uh, I, you know, I was very, very lucky to find the woman that I did. It's a blessing. No, no, that's not, that's not to, to denigrate her at all. That's just saying that, like, I was just lucky that time. Uh, but my point being is that, you know, when it comes to, like a, like, a wandering eye, for instance, like you said, like, how would you feel if the lady you were with did the exact same thing? Not that she was being unfaithful, but just, you know, her, you know, having good conversations with other men, like, you know, just always, like, put the, put yourself in their shoes. Or, like, put their shoes on you, if that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. I'm not that insecure anymore. Like, I, I, I know what I'm bringing to the table. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I know whoever else you may be talking to won't compare to what I'm bringing. <laughs> but no, no, what I mean, though, like, consider how you feel when you're with, when you talk to these other women. Right. When you're talking about, like, you feel conflicted because now you met someone else that's dope. Yeah. Like, what would you think if the woman you were with was having that feeling about somebody else? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, as long as it's communicated, because I'm very open with every woman mm-hmm. I speak to about this 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 exact thing. So, if we have that communication, maybe from the beginning, a weekend, month in, or whatever, and, then there, and I have that awareness, I'll be able to move comfortably and accordingly. But if it was behind my back, when I'm being honest, mm-hmm. I would feel some type of way. No. Well, I mean... 
consent is the biggest thing. As long as you guys are open and honest about everything, then there is no nothing off limits as long as you guys are consenting. Right. You know and what I mean? Especially if we're intimate. Like I don't mm-hmm. I, I I can't I personally can't have multiple sexual partners at a time. I just just to be safe, to save the aspect mm-hmm. of it all. Um but communicating, like flirting, that shit don't bother me. Yeah. I had this conversation with my ex because we're still friends. And I told her, you know, because I still evaluate my emotions uh, in um, respect to like in, in respect to our relationship. And I and I still feel like I love her. Right. But the thing that made me not want to be in a relationship was because I started realizing that even when you love somebody, you're like, I don't know. This is my truth. And I think it's a lot of men who feel like this sexually we're going to be attracted to many women mm-hmm. i don't need in reality right yeah you know you get to know them and then have sex but if we're just going off of raw emotion raw urges i don't even give a damn what your name is you know what i'm saying yeah. if you got nice boobs you got a pure, pretty face and a fat ass it's just like yo it can go down yeah. right we're primal mm-hmm. we're primal we're genetically engineered to think that way right we are made to procreate so that's not necessarily our faults that we think that way but we are intellects right we have conscious so it is our fault if we allow ourselves to our our, our behavior to be dictated by that primal instinct right because we're evolved 100%, right percent, yeah right so that's the other side of the coin but when it comes to a complete natural um innate urge we all as men think that way so i told my ex like Sexually, I'm going to be attracted to this many women. Like, that's just what it is. And I was confused about that because I was like, how can I love her but still want to have sex with this random girl on Instagram? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really struggle with that because I didn't understand that. Mm-hmm. Like, how, I know I love you. And on top of that, it was long distance. Mm-hmm. And we did the long distance thing for about two, three years. But it got to a point where I was depressed. Because I was being loyal, but mm-hmm. I was fucking depressed. Nah, it's hard. It's, I mean, it's how long hard. were you guys going between like seeing each other? Sometimes it'd be a month. Sometimes it'd be three weeks. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it'd be two weeks. We had periods of time where it'd be back to back. Like we see each other every two weeks for like a couple months. And then we have a time where we don't see each other for a whole month. Then the pandemic hit and she works for the federal government. And we weren't together during that time, but we still were seeing each other all the way up until the pandemic. I'm talking about literally a week before the pandemic started, I had seen her. Mm -hmm. That was the last time I saw her in person. That was in March. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the longest I've ever went without seeing this person. So imagine if we even were still in our relationship, how how hard, for me, it would have been hard. I'm a person who needs physical affection. Mm -hmm. I'm a Leo, all right? Uh, My love language is physical, words of affirmation, you know, gifts you know (laughs) but (laughs) like i need that physical aspect so learning that about myself it was a very tiring lesson because i was literally torturing myself Mm -hmm. being in this situation because i know i loved her i know i wanted to be with her but i couldn't be with her in this particular situation consider this for a minute Mm -hmm. Loving someone and being dedicated to someone does not mean that you never find another person attractive. Yes, All that I means do. is that you respect that person and you love them and you care about them enough that you're not going to be unfaithful to that agreement that yeah. you have when you decided to be together. Yeah, that's all that is. I agree. Right. Like it's one. Th- it's fine to be attracted to other people. There's nothing wrong with mm-hmm. that. It's whether you act on those impulses. And that's mm-hmm. exactly my whole point. Mm-hmm. That's exactly my whole point because but we're that, never going to stop being attracted to yeah, other but people. But there's nothing wrong with you yeah. for feeling that way. That's all I'm saying. Like that's yeah. human. Yeah. Like I'm sure that my wife watches you know movies with Mario Casas. You know this hit you. Know, guy from Spain is fucking hunk asshole douchebag <laughs> yeah, but you know what she's not like sitting there drooling at the TV yeah. she's re- she loves me enough to be respectful like I'm, I know I yeah. know I know he's right, a better right. looking than me it's fine right. but she's not you know what I mean like she's not being disrespectful about it yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like so it, it's all about I that. struggle with that though because I used to think alright well if I'm thinking this it can lead to a different type of behavior I'm I'm more susceptible to cheating if I'm in a certain situation because of this you know what I'm saying and plus I've already like I said inherited the sense of my father and I'm you know I'm hypersexual you That's know what I'm saying 
Yeah, you know, I, I it's the truth. I have a high libido, so it's just like I felt like it was a recipe for disaster, and I didn't want to damage our friendship. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, long distance makes it harder, no doubt. Yeah. But as long as you're honest about stuff that's going and that's on, that's what she respected. Me. Yeah, you don't want to hurt anybody. You want I kept it real with her. Yeah. If it, if you can't do it, if you can't keep that commitment, then you. I told her. Yeah, you owe the person at least that to, yeah. to be like, listen, you know, I don't think this is gonna work. I yeah. can't. I can't commit to, to what we talked about. Ultimately, that's what it ultimately came to. And she's still my friend to this day because I never did it dirty. I just kept it yeah. real. Well, you, know? you, did, you, you did a stand-up guy move. You, yeah. you told her how you felt. And it is what it is. And that yeah. way, I mean, it may not have been pleasant right. to, to hear that. But at least you respect the person enough to be honest and have a difficult conversation. Yeah. You know, that's the that's the part that we a lot of guys duck. We don't yeah. want to have that difficult conversation. Yeah. We think it we can get away with it. very difficult. You know Man, I, mean? I avoided yeah. that shit for so long. I mean, I knew what I wanted to say. It's like a Band-Aid, bro. But just I get was, it over with. Man, it was bothering me for so long. I just, <clears throat> I was dragging shit out. I'm talking about, we took a vacation together, and I'm thinking this shit. And, you know, like, oh, fuck, man. I just. I see, Jeff, you got something brewing right now. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I would like for you to speak to the feeling or the realization when you knew your wife was the woman you wanted to marry. All right, so how did I, you know? When did you know? What made you know? Shout out, shout out to Dom because Dom, my my friend Dom from Three Ninjas Podcast, asked me the same question, and I apologize to anybody listening. I've told this story before, but Sorry, I just, no, 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 it's all good. For me, you know, I I had this idea in my head. As, as, I don't know. I think I was in like middle school or something. I told myself here, this through no evidence or anything. It's just something I told myself like out of thin air. Yeah. I was like, you got to find a, a hot girl. Who doesn't act like she's hot? Mm. You know what I mean. That was what I told myself, mm. and it made sense logically because yeah. you don't want someone who who knows uh -huh. who thinks their shit don't stink Hell and who yeah. knows they can get over on people because of their looks. Right. Like that's a bad recipe. Hell yeah. And you also don't want someone who thinks they're hotter than they are, and then you know it's yeah, like not all that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Right. You know. <laughs> I'm doing all this for a six. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, I just so happened that I met my wife. You know, I, she walked into the bar and it was one of those things where it's like you hit a record skip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Like my my best friend Drew was sitting next to me. We were in New Orleans, all right, in the tequila bar. She walked in. I went like this. I grabbed his leg, <laughs> and I just like like don't look now. The hottest girl you've ever seen in your life just walked in. <laughs> like try not to move my mouth. Hey. Like, She's so hot. I'm gonna make a scene. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, and then you know, I got to we got to talk, and then we went on a few dates, and you know, when you really get to talk to somebody. And we were, she was up here visiting. We went to, we were in New York City. We w took a walk on like the High Line and stuff. We were down in like, we went down to like the West Village, just a couple bars and had some dinner. Perfect. But just talking, you know what I mean? Like just getting a feel for who somebody is. Mm -hmm. And I could see like she came from like a humble background where it's like she's not acting like she can get whatever she wants out of somebody. Right. But she was, uh, to me, she was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. Mm -hmm. And to see that, that realness, you know what I mean? Like that not, she she didn't have that air about her like she thought she was better than everyone else. Mm. Like she seemed humble, and when you really know get to know somebody further, and you see that they have a real generous heart, mm. like that to me, I was like, that's it, that's it. Like oh. she's beautiful, and she would you know she would give you the shirt off her back. That's the kind of Aww. person she is. Right? I love stories. That's like rare. That. It is rare, and that's, that's why rare. I didn't wait. Like we met in we met in September 2015. I proposed the next September. Oh, and that man. was going back and forth long distance. Yeah. That was me you spending a small fortune in airfare. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I love that because that's, I love that because like it, you're show, you show me like it's possible. Like I so love the possible. possibilities. Let me love. add one more wrinkle to that. You, and you might, you might identify with this. I went through a long, long time. Like all those years I told you I was living alone. Or I was like, there's no way, there's no way I'm getting married. Mm. Like now, like at first, I was like, maybe I don't want to get married. And then we have relationships, it would end badly. And I'm like, no, I definitely don't want to get married. Then another relationship, and it ends badly again. And I'm thinking, like, this is just a sign. Like, this is not for me. I was not meant to have a relationship like this. I was not meant to have a family. I'm a loner. I'm a lone wolf. I'm a one man wolf mm. pack. I'm like Zach Galifianakis, you know, in the hangover. <laughs> and then just one day, something happens. You meet, excuse me, you meet somebody. Mm -hmm. That's how you know you get an old talk through burps. <laughs> <laughs> But that's what happens, you know. It it always they always say it happens when you least expect it. Mm -hmm. That 
part I've learned is true. It's so true because that's the way I met my ex that I'm still in love with. Oh, um, he's shaking his head. I'm so <laughs> messy. Nah, I just feel like y'all are meant to be together. That's Everybody right. feels that like before. that. Every, I feel like that in my spirit. Like, Don't leave. Dearly, I just know. Dearly. Like, she's supposed to be my wife and have my kids. Like, I just feel like we met at a party. What this guy needs, he just needs to be, he needs to have his dreams accomplished before First, he can really yes. be with this girl. That's exactly. That's it. Well, that's that's, that's it. a big thing, too. If you, well, you get at least set, at least comfortable yes. on your own. Yes. You need to have that. That's your base. That's, that's first. your floor. Yeah. I have to have that first. And I'm yeah. still establishing myself right you now. You can't be that guy who's out there. I need somebody to take care of me. No, I don't no, cook no, for no, myself. No. I, you know, I need somebody mm-hmm. who's going to wash. You yeah. can't do that. Because no. I can't do that. I'm the total opposite of that. That's something I see with a lot of guys from Miami. They, I don't do laundry. I need somebody who's going to do this. You know what I'm talking about? Wow. I, 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 These guys, wow. I, I don't like it. They I, can't do anything for themselves, no. and they depend on a woman for all that. If you have to do that, it's not going to work. It's not right. going to It's not going to. It's not going to be as good as it could be. No. Right. If you are, you come to the relationship as a complete person. Yes. And you're dealing with another complete person, or at right. least as close to that as you can get, because nobody's yeah. perfect. Right. That's. Where that's, the success is and, and, you know? and I think that's where we are Because we both Like we've identified Like she's still working on herself I'm still working on myself We met in college So it's just like You know what I'm saying I know I'm going to still have my fun In between now and then Yeah But I just feel like I know who wifey is Hey if it's meant to be It's meant to be I just I It's it so. just The universe keeps providing You know what I'm saying <laughs> It's just like yeah. I, I don't know All the stars are aligned In her direction Alright so we're coming up close to the end here. I don't want to keep you guys all night. I appreciate you driving all the way out here. Before we get out of here, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Any particular topics you had in mind? Um, hmm. I really want to know your connection with mental health. My connection with mental health? Yeah. Well, we all we all struggle with it at one point or another. Mm-hmm. My whole thing is I'm not anybody special. That's the way I look at it. I'm no, I'm just another guy. I'm going through a journey just like everyone else. Mm. So I'm not here to try to tell people what they should or shouldn't do. Mm. I'm just basically sharing my journey with the people that are listening. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm. like I said, like there was a point in time when I heard podcasts that talked about what I was going through and that made me feel not alone. It made me feel like, oh, okay. So this is something that happens. It's not just me. Like I'm not isolated. Mm. You know, I'm not I'm not the only one. So I want to share what's happening to me with other guys in hopes that maybe somebody at somewhere along their path in life is going to hear it and be like, oh, that's what I was dealing with last year. And this mm. guy's talking about it right now. Like, right. you know what? Like, okay, that, that makes me feel a little better. It gives you a, a sense of relief, mm. you know, yeah. just to, to feel like you're not alone and build that community of guys. We're all dedicated to being better. And, you know, we raise better kids you know, we, we affect change that way where we exist. We want to be and exemplify the change we want to see in the world yeah. and hope that that filters down to the people around us. You know what I mean? Yes. 100%. And I just want to be I want to be a positive person in life. And you can't do that if you don't talk about mental health issues. You know, whether even if you if you consider yourself mentally healthy, yeah. mm-hmm. like we all have struggles. So, but just having the conversation is a big step in the right direction, I think. And I just come to it very humbly. I don't know more than the next guy. I'm just, this is what's happened with me. How about you? Mm. You know? I think being open to that is a huge step that a lot of people don't take. You know what I'm saying? Just being open to talk about how you feel and being honest about it. Even if you're mentally healthy, you know, just like somebody physically healthy, they still have to exercise. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To maintain that health. So there's things that we all need to do, you know, healthy coping skills, being able to verbalize your traumas and being able to have great you know, coping method, uh, mechanisms. It's important to, to know that, have insight, self-awareness. You know, I think it's just super important. Man. I have a question for both of you, actually, because I, I think it's perfect because, like, there's two uh, spectrums of the age gap, like older version of what I'm about to ask and younger. How has 2020 been for you? Uh, you know, this has been the, the craziest year we've all experienced collectively. There's a lot of uncertainty, uncertainty every day, but I feel like it's more prevalent now with the uh, inception of the coronavirus and mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, I'm curious, how has 2020 been and have you learned anything about yourself? I'm actually going to let Ray go first. I have learned plenty about myself, uh, especially mental health wise. Mm. You know, being inside for so long, you don't really, you're not going to school as much and you're not really 
talking to as many people, you don't really let yourself out much. So you end up, you know, either learning a lot about yourself or talking to new people and learning new things about them. But mainly, like, social media has been a big thing. Like, just in general within itself, social media, I feel like, especially for this generation, if you don't know, like, who you are, it's, like, a really bad place to be. Mm. Because, like, you'll you'll either run into... Because there's two giant big topics. It's either politics or what's happening with races at the moment and it's just like dude like you know wherever you are on this standpoint it's either you can get canceled extremely fast and you'll have like a whole side of the internet against you or you'll you know you'll you'll feel like egotistical because it's like oh this is my topic and i'm correct about this all the time and i just i like internet wise i don't like any of this you know the mask got to keep it on now everything is completely different you know even with school things are getting like way harder now and going through grades and like thinking about what you're going to do with your future it's kind of hard like you don't really have you know you know they they can open career prep prep and you can think about it but you don't really like base yourself around anything you don't really get to have a you know a one-on-one i feel like people need a like a more physical version of school in order to be like connected and i just it's hard to focus it's hard to like you know you can you can sit at home and try to throw yourself into the computer and be like oh okay you know like maybe this can be easy and then you just have like 800 pieces of homework and your teachers are on you your teachers call your parents your parents are on you and then you also have home stuff to do and you're just like yeah how do i get out of here like Mm -hmm. it starts to turn into like a stress and do you ever feel like basically trapped in the house now? Yeah, you you feel like your whole life is in the house now. Yeah, now it's now it's like your friends are supposed to be in the house, and you you know especially with video games, you know you just you're in a party all day, you're just like you don't get to go outside. You're you feel really really trapped within the fact of school because you know if especially if your parents aren't helping out with it, you don't you're getting all this school stuff thrown at you and it's a lot at one time especially if you're trying to pass an entire grade yeah and it's like you'll you'll legitimately have over 10 assignments that you have to do in one day just for the teachers to be like oh okay you get like a slightly passing grade for this and whatever have you been using the bike at all um you, you don't really I don't have any time mm. at all and yeah like, I gave him my bike because he you're in you're right by New Brunswick mm. so he's on my sh- like bro you got so much shit around here like, you could ride the bike to like everywhere cool like in this area you know but I know like with the, the freaking virtual schooling I knew it was hard that. but I didn't know it was that bad it's you a lot not, you can't like fight with the school system I'm right? not gonna lie I'm happy as hell I'm not in school anymore <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie I graduated college like three years ago I'm like oh. bro I seen it with my son it's not easy imagine being younger than him Imagine being a little kid. That's who I was really thinking about when I asked that. Like, cause like, mm-hmm. I feel bad. What are you finger painting virtually? Like, how do you? What do they do? Like, bro, I, like, I've I've stayed a couple of days. I've had off, or I've I've seen him. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not good, man. Mm-hmm. Like that. Te- I mean, my my hat is off to the teachers. They're they're doing everything they can. They're really working their ass off. It's not easy having a bunch of little kids on a Zoom call. I mean, I don't think they use Zoom. Trying to but, keep their attention. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's not easy. All right. Yeah, they're all over the place. You see, you see the cameras like down here at the chin, or they're like, eating <laughs> you know, it's. And teachers it's, are doing like, they 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 have like a uh, a virtual version, and they'll have a physical version. It's like ten and ten, and they're paying attention to two at a time, and so like, you know, one might get more attention than the other, and so sometimes you'll have a hard time with certain things. It's like teacher, like come on, just tell me the question that you said like three minutes ago. So you're just like, oh, yeah, give me, like, five minutes, and then five minutes, you're just like, you never got what you're supposed to say to the teacher, and then you come out of there with, like, either misinformation, you don't do something right, and then that turns into, like, a ball of problems, and it just snowballs, and then, like, that just turns into stress that you Consi- really can't, like, get out. Yeah. Consider this, too. Like, what happens if, if, say, he or, say, my son doesn't know something, and, like, the day is over now? Now, you can't ask the teacher, you're going to ask me? You gonna rely on my memory? Go to, go to the office. Go to Google. Like, <laughs> we're, we got problems now. You know. I get it. Yeah. Like for yeah. like for me, 
I, I'm in a situation where really not much has changed because I've been working through the whole thing. I've been considered essential. Like I, I work construction, and it just mm. so happens that where I work in Jersey City, mm-hmm. they part of the building is considered low income. Mm-hmm. So that's it, that falls under the loophole of huh, essential, even though majority of it is like luxury high rise shit. Like, <laughs> come on, guys! Like who, that's a good job out in Jersey City. Yeah, yeah. I went to Jersey City University. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working right now right on Columbus Boulevard. Okay, okay. So I'm right on Columbus and Warren. Okay, that's uh, down the hill. Yeah, I'm, I'm all the way downtown. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I've been working through this whole thing. So for me, the change has been coming home and seeing the toll it's taken on my wife and my son. Mm. And, you know, my in-laws live here too. Mm. You know, for my father-in-law, nothing changed for him because he was already working from home. Mm-hmm. My mother-in-law, she doesn't work. She's you know, hanging out, helping around the house. Mm. Nothing changed for her. But now my wife is home. And my son is home. And I see it. I see it big time. You know, that it's like cabin fever. Imagine being like a nine-year-old kid. You can't go outside, can't play with your friends. Man. Like, it's... Just tough. Really I feel dumb. awful. And I'm trying I'm trying to do stuff for him. But especially now with the cold weather. Oh, yeah. Lockdown like, is, was assured anyways with the cold weather coming. Bro. And I now get, with COVID and cold weather. We've had to have some, some, some serious heart-to-hearts. Me and my son about stuff because it's it's taking a toll on him. It's not his fault at all, but it's affected him big time. Yeah. And I'm trying to do what I can to, you know, level it out a little bit. But it's it's not easy, man. Like I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that this stuff ends soon. You know, I, I mean, so. we're we're doing everything we can. We're wearing masks. We're getting tested. Yeah. You know, I got to get tested for work and stuff. But mm-hmm. you know, if people don't want to wear a fucking mask, like yeah, yeah, no wonder this shit's still going on. Right. You guys are out there still coughing and breathing, breathing on each other, going to damn so parties, singing fucking village people to one another, spitting in each other's eye. So, oh, yeah. big surprise! It's coming back for a third wave now. Stupid shit. Stupid yeah. shit. It's like you're mad the schools are closed. Well, wear a mask. Maybe we can open them back. I don't know. People are ridiculous. What do I know? I just work here, you know? <laughs> I, I always wear my mask whenever I go to the grocery store. I just I feel weird if I don't have it now. Yeah, but you know I, what, though? It's the minimum. It's the, it's minimum, the minimum we can do. And it's not it's for the, us. Yeah, it's, it's for, for who, the guy next to us. Yeah. You know? It's just like... I vividly remember when, like, COVID was just starting to come around around, like, early, uh, late February, early March. Mm-hmm. I remember walking into a quick check. I was the only person in there with my mask on. I was paranoid from the jump. Oh, mm-hmm. life altering virus? Give me a mask. Yeah. I walk into that quick check. I'm the only one wearing a mask. Everyone's looking at me like I'm crazy. I walk into that same quick check <laughs> the other day. Everyone got a mask on. It's just crazy mm-hmm. to think people like mm-hmm. when people hear certain things, it's like they don't take it seriously until there's, I guess, until it the, affects them. Yeah. And it's just like, yo, are you serious? Like, well, that's the problem, too, is that it became political, especially facts, in an election yeah. year. Yeah. Like that was the worst thing that could have happened. So now you have two sides, mask or no mask. And neither side's going to back down but clearly one side is is right like i if people i hear people that don't want to wear the mask i'm like what's the matter you too you too soft what to wear we, it yeah. it's going to hurt your sensitive face <laughs> oh poor baby like, that you, usually straightens them out are you going to take the vaccine uh, <laughs> is that well here's the thing I, i'm not an an, i'm not an anti vaxxer okay. okay my thing is like vaccines usually take a long time to be developed mm-hmm. this one you know, because it was all hands Real on quick. deck, yeah, yeah. it was kind of rushed. So, uh, yeah, of course, I am a little concerned. Shit. And the problem is, even all the misinformation out there, you see it. And like, yeah, it's bullshit, but you're still like, <laughs> I don't want to be walking away with Bell's palsy. From taking I was just about to say, you saw yeah. that post? I'm just like... But that's uh, the thing, like, that's what we're talking about, the misinformation. Like, we, we know it's probably not true, yeah, but, but it's <laughs> enough to... Sp- to, to spook you, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's just like, like oh, I don't want to take the risk. I don't want to be that first guy, but I'll I'll be like number 50, 50 something in line. <laughs> you know, yeah. the only like, way. Oh, what you about to say? Uh, no, it's gonna be just big for like vaccinating school and stuff, mm-hmm. and, like a whole new vaccination, along with like the eighty-seven you have to get for your arms because people like to cough on your chest and mm-hmm. you have to like be invulnerable to it or whatever. But I was gonna say, I think the only way I'll take the vaccine, God forbid, is if I contract COVID or something like yeah. that's the only way like I'm sorry I just I, I, I don't know if I'm considered superstitious but I don't even get the flu shot you know well, I don't saying? get that either yeah I, I just I just I don't know I, I don't know I just don't want to it's I think I it's natural to. to be concerned yeah yeah. it's just a matter when we when we fall prey to that the irrational fear right you know because yeah. we all know better 
But again, it's you know it was in a hurry, so it's like you know we all mm-hmm. know what happens when you when you rush, rush things. things. We all know. It's gonna be a lot of trial and error with this. We're gonna vaccine. find out. We're gonna find out. It's gonna be very interesting. At eleven fifty nine, December thirty first, two thousand nineteen, you never could have told me the year would be like this. You Oof. never could have convinced me it was a life altering virus. Mm. This year has been like a movie. It has. Yeah. I think if you made this year into a movie, people would walk out and be like, it's, it's so unbelievable. Yeah. Right. That all this happened in one year. Disbelief. Yeah. yeah. Never could have that's so you. That's so true. If you turn this year into a movie, yeah. You tell me Kobe and Black Panther died? Right. Get the fuck out And, of and now on. Debo from Friday? Oh, oh no. That, that. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. It's crazy. Have you seen Friday? Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure. Yeah. I don't want to take away your black card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, life is crazy, bro. But we made I, it. I, I, know, I know. I know. Tiny Lister. I know. I was, we got it. You got your black card still. <laughs> School it. kind of gets like body slammed on you if something happens like that. That's the part I feel for. It was like that. two weeks, man. Like two weeks. You you hear about a virus or whatever, and you you know you're tech savvy enough to go look at Twitter or Instagram or something, and you're just like, oh, damn. People are dying and stuff, mm-hmm. and then like, you get like a week out of school. It's like, oh, you get like a two week Rona break, and then you know back to regular programming. Go back to school eight o'clock, sit there looking at a teacher, die of sleep. But no, <laughs> you get taken out of school completely, and then they're talking about some. Oh, use the computer you have from school, which is like laggy, broken. Normally can't get a new one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you have a problem with charging. Good luck. <laughs> it just it's a, a whole ball of problems. Your computer yeah. doesn't work. Figure it out, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah figure yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah. Go go do it by yourself. Like and that's just not it's not healthy at all. Like you can't do anything with that. Well oh. we're here for you, buddy. You know you know where to find me. Got sure. it. Uh, anything else before we get out of here, guys? Can we like promote our social medias and all that? Yeah. Gonna, trust me, we're gonna get to that. I'm okay. not gonna leave you hanging on that part. But anything else you guys wanna address though? Like any questions before we leave? It's been very interesting. I've I've really enjoyed this. I needed I, to, I needed this. It's very cathartic. I really hate virtu- uh, uh, podcasting virtually. I kind of getting tired of being in the house. Mm-hmm. But to be around genuine individuals, it just feels great. Thank you. Thank Likewise. you so much. It's been great. All right, so here comes the plug time. What do you guys want to plug? Would it promote whatever you guys got? Tell uh, them where they can find you. So follow me on social media. Instagram is at theav360. Twitter.com. Twitter, yeah, twitter.com backslash um, THT ambitious guy, that ambitious guy. Uh, and of course, the uh, podcast introvertedpod.com for all details, bookings, merchandise is on there as well, all our socials for the podcast. And my last plug is this is the first place I'm ever going to really announce this. Uh, February 28th, I'm releasing my first book, The mm. Avenue. A personal All dictionary. Right. It's a self-reflective and transparent tale about my desire to find healing and change within, um, while battling my depression and my my insecurities. It took me four years. It's the I'm so proud of this shit. This book is the best thing I've ever done in my entire life. I found healing through my book. You're gonna get my healing form, my my healing uh, in tangible form, and uh, I'm really proud of it. So February 28th. 2021 my first book would be available for purchase on amazon for 11 dollars paperback 299 uh ebook so please look out for that and support that when it's out you i want to be a bestseller major. you guys heard it here we had a pot amongst men exclusive tonight yeah major man. yeah um yeah you guys can definitely follow me on instagrams at cr underscore 908 i'm mostly on instagram you can find me on twitter by the same name but i'm not really on twitter i'm really on instagram um uh, right now, I have a single called Visions featuring Matt Diana. It's on all major music platforms. It's a single for my R&B project called Cold Hearted, and it's dropping. It was going to be for New Year's, but I'm pushing it back because I have to add another song with an artist on my label on there. So I have to push it back. So it's going to come out the weekend of Valentine's Day. But I'll drop another single for New Year's instead. So follow me on Instagram to keep up with all of those goodies at CR underscore 908. Beautiful. And we both drop in February. That's good. I know. Yeah. We're going to change the world. Change the world. I told you 2021. (laughs) Well, you guys know where to find us as usual. If you're watching this, please make sure you like and subscribe on YouTube. And uh, you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, Amazon Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcasts, we are there. 
please make sure you follow us and rate if you're on a, a platform that allows that and helps us in the algorithms. And uh, yeah, make sure you follow us on Instagram, a pot amongst men on Instagram and Twitter. And for any long form questions or comments or concerns, you can email us a pot amongst men at gmail.com. That's all I got tonight. Guys, I want to say thank you very much for making the trip out here. I really enjoyed the conversation. Like you said, I don't think you're the only one that needed this. It's nice to have people here and really, you know, enjoy the vibe, get to know somebody. You know, hopefully we can do this again in the future. You can come on we, our show. Yes. I would love to. Yes. So both of you. Both of you. You guys got to come that. to me. You can be my partner now, bro. This, yeah. is, yeah. this is Ray's first podcast, right? Yeah. Whoa. They, did. they you killed, killed it. Killed it, bro. Yeah. All right. So we'll see you guys next week. Peace.